All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to headline Bellator 294 on April the 21st. And contending for that Bellator Flyweight Championship, we've got Deanna Bennett taking on Liz Carmouche. And great getting to have Deanna on the show. How's your day going so far, Deanna? Um, it's pretty good for once the sun's out in Philadelphia. Well, hopefully it lasts longer than like the last hour because it changes every other hour here. Um, but yeah, can not complain? Doing what I love, enjoying my days. Well, that's good to hear, and hopefully that's a you know good mindset over the course of the whole camp. Just because this seems like a you know big fight for sure. Like I was seeing a little excerpt from an interview you had talking about how the first fight was like you know, really something you think a lot about, like obviously tough circumstance in that, just with the injury you sustained in the first fight. Like what was the excitement level realizing that you were going to, you know, get that chance to fight, you know, Liz Carmouche again? I I can't describe it, honestly. I, I've i pictured this happening so many times in my head. Like I feel like it almost willed it into existence because I, when my manager called, he was down in Brazil and he, uh, he called, he actually FaceTimed me, so I'm like, okay, this is weird. I don't know why you're FaceTiming me. I don't do the FaceTime thing. <laughs> but, um, he FaceTimed me, and I was like, okay, you either have really good news or you got bad news. I'm not sure what's happening. And he's like, no, I just wanted to see your face. And, like, it's still complete disbelief. I'm like, is this really happening? And then they sent the contract, and I'm still like, is this even happening? And then they, it finally, like, I've been training for this since the last time we got out of the cage, you know, after the surgery, after everything, you know, I have a, a real big scar on my butt that reminds me every day of that fight. And I, uh, <laughs> like when they finally announced it, I was like, that's when I started to come to like, Oh, it's, it's real. Yeah. Um, people know about it now. It's actually happening. And, you know, I, every day I'm in the gym, you know, working hard. I was working hard before they found out about the fight and, you know, working even harder now, like, my my coaches have to be like, okay, I need you to calm down, I need you to take a rest, and I was like, no, I'm too excited, like, I I love fighting, I love the sport, and to be able to, to have this fight back again for the title, like, it's exactly how I envisioned it, and I, I'm so, so excited, I, I don't think I've ever been this excited for a fight before. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a lot of facets to this fight that I definitely, you know, want to get your insights on. But just you were talking about, like, you know, some of the training and stuff like that. And I'm, I guess, curious about that because I saw a picture of you with Amanda Levy getting in some good work. But the last time we were talking, it seemed like you were at Daniel Gracie team. Is that still, like, the dynamic now? Or where would you say you're mostly training ahead of this one? Yeah, yeah. So I, for the last year, I've been training at Marquez MMA, Daniel Gracie team in, in Philadelphia. And it's been amazing. You know, I, I, I love, I got drawn to there because I was training at another gym and I started going there just like for sparring for other bodies and that kind of stuff. And then I just loved how intense their training was there. And so some stuff happened and I was like, I want to be here full time. And the coach is like, we would love to have you. And so I started training there full time about a year ago and so so happy for it it's it's a tough room like if you think of all the people that are there on that team you know being able to be in the room with them and work with them and get pushed by them like it's it's amazing and amanda is such an amazing competitor and the fact that i get to train with her and just like pick her brain with knowledge with you know ground stuff and be able to help her out and she helps me out and i'm just grateful for the opportunity there like i i love it yeah i mean she's been doing great for sure and some recent you know endeavors on the pfl circuit that you know i was enjoying but i was curious to you know get some thoughts on this because i saw you posted a like a throwback invicta fc pick a little bit ago talking about how it was like you know among one of your you know favorite fight picks because like you had like you know blood everywhere it was like the broken nose and everything like that and just like i guess pushing through different like I guess personal issues you know things like that just like it seemed like a really impactful sort of moment and everything and we were just kind of alluding to the fact that you had that pretty serious injury in the first Carmouche fight like do you think that fight could eventually become like a similar memory and as far as like being able to I guess like push through certain like you know pronounced injuries and just real I guess roadblocks and stuff like that absolutely 
Um, you know, I, that's one of the things, like, I think back on that first Liz fight and I'm like, I wish I was able to, to keep moving in that one. You know, there was less than two minutes left in the third round. And I think about it all the time. Like I was, I, I was like in shock when I felt the pop in my hip and I was like, uh, and so I stopped moving and like, what if I kept fight, like didn't stop moving, didn't let her take my back. If I was able to do this. And so, so yeah, it, it really is like, even though, you know, on paper it shows, you know, I obviously I lost the fight. It's an L on my record. You know, there's a, there's a lot of good takeaway from that fight and something that I think about in that same vein um, cause the, the picture that I posted was when I fought Roxanne Modafari and I, it was like the worst fight week. It was, I was like right before what I didn't even put in that caption, like right before I went to walk out, I remember having the mindset and I was like, all right, it's 15 minutes at the most. I just have to go out there, do my thing and then just get it over with. And I'm like, that's, that was what got me. And I'm like, and it took me breaking my nose, bleeding everywhere, and I was like, get it over with. Like, why do I want to get it over with? This is where I'm my happiest. When I'm in that cage and when I'm fighting, you know, this is what I live for. This is what makes me excited. And it's my why in life. It's like why I get up every day, why I do the things that I do. And so I um, I just, I, I, I love it. And so it's the same with that, that first Liz fight, you know. I, I was so happy to be in that Bellator cage. It was my first Bellator fight and to be there. And, you know, I think, you know, it's all the what ifs, like, well, what if I would have done this? What if I would have done that? But, like, it's it's the same exact thing. And so getting this opportunity to run this back, it's like, yeah, you know, stuff happens. There's the variables where you get hurt. I have a really, I have a teammate, the smartest guy that I've met in the MMA world. He's so analytical about everything. I had this talk with him, and he's like, you have to prepare for what you do well. You have to prepare for what they do well. And then you have to prepare for the variables, like the the unknowns that you, like, what might happen but might not. And that's one of those variables is, you know, if you get hurt in a fight, if something gets injured, and so you have to you have to prepare yourself for those instances, and it's something that, that I have. And it's, yeah, I think back about that fight, like I said, all the time. And so to be able to, it's one of those things that you have to prepare for as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you said something, you know, very impactful there, like talking about how, you know, mixed martial arts is your why and like that day-to-day pursuit. Like I was seeing another kind of throwback pick. It was like a bit of a blurry one. Like you were saying, oh, this is like my first amateur MMA fight I was basically peer pressured into doing it like did you realize in like the vacuum of that moment that this it became your why or was it like a gradual realization thereafter honestly I so yeah it was a series of peer pressures that got me to that very first fight like it was always like a, oh I'm not going to and then and they're like nope we signed you up and so of course I just I caved the peer pressure but I remember walking out for that very first fight there's you know it's been a long time since then but i very very clearly still remember walking to that cage for my first amateur fight nervous i'm like awkward i'm not sure what's going on and i remember getting in that cage and i heard the click of them walking the cage behind me and i looking over to the other side it was her name was ariel ensley and i i was looking her down and i was like Something just felt right. Like, in that moment, in that cage, like, obviously I was nervous. It was my first cage fight. But something just felt like I was at home. And just the experience of being in that cage, I'm like, this is where I'm supposed to be. You know, there's not been a lot of moments in my life where, like, I I don't know about this. (laughs) You know, I don't. Like, you have that other easy feeling, you go somewhere, and you're like, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know if I like this. But getting in that cage, I was like, something just felt right on that very first fight. And I I didn't think that I would make a career of it, honestly. I just knew that I loved it, and I knew that I wanted to keep doing it. And the fact that I get to do that for a living now and fight on, you know, the biggest stages in, in the world, I'm like, that just it's amazing to me and I'm just grateful for it honestly and everything's kind of come together in like a fun like adhering to 
a narrative kind of context because you almost like manifested the rematch into reality like there was like a post-fight scrum clip on your instagram and you were talking about just like certain ideal outcomes like in as far as like you keep on the track you're on and you know if liz ends up winning the title you'd like to you know see that rematch kind of come to fruition in that kind of regard and just with both of you debuting with bellator against one another it seems like quite the narrative building into the rematch absolutely absolutely that clip that i posted was a year ago the very first time i fought justine in february um of last year and it, it's playing out exactly how i imagined exactly how i said you know i knew being in the cage with liz like i knew she was a tough fight going in and after being in the cage with her i, I knew that she was going to win the title I had no doubts that she was going to work her way. She was going to get a few more fights and that she was going to get that title. And I just knew that I was going to do everything in my power to win my next few fights, prepare, win my next few fights, because I, I want to fight the best. And I knew she was going to be the top of the division again. And, you know, I couldn't think of a better way to rematch her than for the title. And so it's, it's so weird that it's playing out that way, but you know, it's, we we both worked hard to get to where we're at and so that's what brings us to this rematch yeah for sure and you talk about this being like the best version of you heading into this and obviously i would think that's informed by just like the work you've been putting in with the technique and you know building up the gas tank different you know x's and o's like that but is there like some intel you got from that first fight that emboldens maybe a sense of confidence in this rematch. Like, obviously, you're indicating it's going to be one of the best fighters in the world, a very tough challenge. But is there intel from that first fight that maybe emboldens a certain sense of confidence in the rematch, being that, you know, I mean, knock on wood, hopefully you're able-bodied throughout the rematch. I don't want to jinx you there, but is there something you got from the first fight that would have... <laughs> um, go ahead. First off, I'm knock on wood right here. Um, <laughs> but honestly, it was... I... I... She's a tough competitor, so obviously you always want to give your your competitors. Um, uh, you don't want to underestimate them or overestimate them or anything like that. But you want to respect them when you get in there. But I feel like the first fight, you know, I went in there and maybe gave a little bit too much respect, um, and I don't mean that in in uh, a bad way at all. Um, but almost like, okay, I'm the underdog and whatever happens, happens and stuff. And like, no, I'm a competitor too. You know, I'm in there and my skills are, you know, up there with hers. I'm not saying that I'm a better fighter than her or anything like that, but I, I belong to be in there as well. Um, so she's tough, but you know, I'm tough too. And so I feel like that was my biggest takeaway. It was nothing about her skills. It was nothing about anything like that. It was more, I, I, I've I always felt like I can compete with the top. And being there in a cage, that was my biggest takeaway. And it was proof to myself and proof to other people that, that I do belong in there and that I, I am a top competitor. I think that, that was the biggest one there. And, like, I, I, I just went out there and I did what I wanted to I did what I did, and I had fun in that fight. And, you know, I wasn't coming out there to, like, prove a point, but the I it it did prove something to myself. And, you know, it was it was nice to get that, that validation, even from some other people, because uh, a few months later, you know, I had my surgery. I was up in New York, and I was uh, helping corner a friend for the flex fights that they have up in New York, and we were in the same locker room as Ray Longo. And he was at that first fight. He was in the same locker room. Like, my coach had talked to him multiple times, that kind of stuff. And um, so we're there in the locker room with, at my friend's fight a few months later. And I'm just sitting there, and I see him, and I was like, oh, that's Ray Longo. I haven't actually met him before. Like, I saw him there, and I'm like, of course you know who that is. He's a legend in the sport. And I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden I turn, and he looks at me. And he like, his eyes just kind of, like, perked up. And I was like, oh. Hi. And then he like <laughs> walks over and I was like, Oh, I'm awkward. So I'm really uncomfortable right now. I don't, this is like a legend in the sport. And he's like, Deanna, how are you? And I was like, Oh, hi, you know my name. <laughs> this is crazy. He's like, yeah, 
I was at your last fight, and I just wanted to come over, and I wanted to introduce myself. And I just wanted to say, you know, that was an amazing fight, and obviously it didn't go the way that you wanted, but it was so great. Like, you did so well. And so I just wanted to introduce myself and, and just come and say hi to you. And I was like, oh, you thought my fight was good? <laughs> like, just to, just to kind of get that recognition, it meant the world to me. And first off, somebody like that coming to introduce myself uh, themselves to me, I'm like, I should be the one that's like, hi, can I have a picture? I'm, I don't know who I am. I'm just a little weirdo. But like, <laughs> that that was my biggest takeaway from that. And like, it, it kind of showed people who I am as a fighter, you know? I'm not the one that's like the big social media or anything like that. Like, I'm here to fight. That's my thing. And I know self-promotion is part of it, but I, I struggle with that part. <laughs> I just want to go out there and show who I am as a, as a top fighter. And I'm sorry, I also ramble, so thank you for listening. <laughs> oh, I've had you on the show a few times now. If I had an issue with how you expressed yourself, I feel like I wouldn't be doing that. That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> True. But I still feel the need to apologize because that's who I am. So. It's just kind of funny, though. Like, I was almost like, I'm trying to find a way to almost articulate this thought. Like, it's like you have a very kind of unique kind of perception. It's not like you don't realize you're a talented fighter, obviously. But it's like you almost have this, like, it's like, oh, wow, you know who I am. It's like you're, you know, a very known fighter. It's like you're getting ready to, you know, contend for a title and all. I guess maybe this is a hard question to even endeavor to answer. But, like, how much of a, I guess, competitive or even an improvement curve benefit do you think that is? Like, just that sort of demeanor and everything like that. Um, You know, I just, I, I've seen a lot of fighters. Who, you know, I've been around and done this for a really long time. And I've seen a lot of fighters and they get a little bit of recognition and they like think of themselves like, Oh, I'm big time. I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. And I'm just like, I don't, and this is not who I am as a, as a person ever, you know, I don't ever expect anyone to know who I am. I don't ever expect anything. Like I, I just like to put my head down and I like to work and maybe it's just cause I think I'm really awkward. So I feel if I talk, too much to people that they'll be like what in the world is this who let her in the gym who let her in the hair um but i just i'm just focused and honestly i'm just happy to be able to do what i love every day and i'll i'll never be one of those people that say i'm big time now and i'm like oh no that's <laughs> weird i'm not sure how i feel about that so, like yeah, about that i'm i'm good <laughs> Yeah, you're going to keep it more on the down low. Like, you're going to rock, like, the Canadian tuxedos to the weigh-ins. Like, maybe not, like, the feather boa gimmick. <laughs> Canadian tuxedos will always win. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I, if somebody says they don't love Canadian tuxedos, I don't need that negativity in my life. You are not my kind of person. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you got to cut out that negativity from your life. But I feel like the Canadian tuxedo probably won't be needed for this Hawaii card. Probably a little too toasty for that. Like, how do you feel about being you know, on this kind of, you know, it's like a double header sort of thing. So a lot of big Bellator action over there. Like, how does it feel to kind of be fighting over there? It would seem like a good locale for competing. Like, obviously, going there for professional reasons, but probably worse places to go, I would think. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm super excited. I've never been to Hawaii before, so I can't think of a better reason to go, honestly. I, I, I'm just excited for the opportunity, you know, first and foremost, I'm, I'm there for business. Like that's, that's my thing. But I have friends and stuff. They're like, Oh, we're going to come early and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> y'all take pictures and let me know because up until the 21st, until I get out of the cage on the 21st, my focus is on that fight and winning that title. And then, you know, we're going to play it from year by year from after that. But um, to be able to do it in such a, a great location, you know, it it definitely it helps the morale. Honestly, you know, I don't. It doesn't matter where I fight. You know, I'm happy just to be in the cage. But I'm like, oh no, don't force me to go to Hawaii and be in a really cool location while I win a title. Like that sounds terrible. But okay, if you tell me to. <laughs> I get what you're saying, though, and everything. When you say play it by ear, is that, like, thinking you might even stay there a bit longer? Like, I know you said you're focused on the fight, obviously, but was that what you were kind of talking about, like, maybe elongate the trip? Absolutely. <laughs> I might just have to conveniently miss my flight home. We'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> 
And one of my last questions here, I saw you had a post a little bit ago saying you have three songs that live rent-free in your head, never going to give you up, Cotton-Eyed Joe, and I Want to Dance with Somebody, which I can relate to. I guess to that point, like, what's the thought on the entrance song for this one? Is that a bit of a surprise? Do we kind of have to tune in to catch that, or...? Um, you know, I, well, we'll have to see. So I'm, I'm a creature of habit, heavy emphasis on creature. Um, but I, the walkout song that I've used, um, for my last few fights, I, I don't ever choose a song just cause like, Ooh, this song's really cool. It's, it's something that, that like means something for me. The first, I used the same walkout song for like my first 10 fights. And it was just something that, you know, I, I listened to in the training room. It's something that no one else had walked out to. It's not like crazy. It's something that I was like, had a good base and like got me going, ready to go out there. And uh, the walkout song that I've used since actually being in Bellator, it's a, it's a, like an Argentine folk um, song. And it came about because my mom hates fighting. Let me just put that out there. She hates the fact that I fight. She hates everything like she kind of follows it a little bit now just because i've been in this world for a really long time but like she hates the fact that i fight and doesn't want anything to do with it but me and her during covid we were taking a car ride in utah because i swear i spent most of my time during covid and we were listening to this music um it's uh and um it was playing as just one of my songs that i really liked and she's like this song this one right here and I was like, what? And she's like, this song, you should use this as a walkout song for your next fight. And I was like, the fact that she said anything, like, it wasn't <laughs> even positive, but it wasn't negative. <laughs> but it's something that was, like, almost, like, supportive, like, yeah, I know you're going to take a fight, but if you do, you should use this song. And so I was like, okay. So that's how that song came to be my walkout song. And I really like it because, you know, my mom's my mom's from Argentina. She was born and raised there, came here when she was like 30 years old. Um, so, you know, Argentine culture is something that um, I was raised in. You know, that's something I identify with because um, that's my family heritage. And having that song and having her like supportive and choosing it is, is something that's sentimental to me. And so... I might be using the same song, but uh, we'll find out. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, I love the backstory on that. I mean, hopefully your mom's not listening to this and getting mad at me, thinking I'm trying to sway things there. So, yeah, no, <laughs> stick with that song. Uh, she would never. I promise you. She learned a long time ago to not listen to my interviews. Because <laughs> she was like, Ooh, I don't think I want to hear this. I'm like, please don't, because I say a lot of things that a mother should not hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep having you on the show. You always have a fun quip or two or five. So it's it's a good time. But I want to be mindful of your time. That being said, Deanna, it's always fun talking. But I want to be, you know, cognizant of your schedule as well. So is there any, like, final parting thought you might want to add as we're kind of wrapping up here? Um. Well, first off, thank you for having me and continuing to have me. So doing something right. You keep bringing me back. Um, it's always <laughs> a pleasure. And um no just you know anyone listening make sure you check in um bellator's putting on that double header and we're the the main event on that first one and what's it 294 and it's gonna be it's gonna be a great time i'm i'm excited you know i've been waiting for this for years and i just i've like I said before, I'm, I've never been this excited for a fight. You know, obviously I'm always excited to be able to get in the cage because I love it, but there's been like an extra drive behind this and it just means so much to me. So, you know, I'm putting everything that I have out there and I, I know Liz does the same. I was at her last fight. She came out there with a purpose and that's what excites me for this one is that, you know, I hope she comes out there with that same drive and that same intensity because that's what I'm going to do and that is what makes a good fight for people who who do to in and watch and so i'm just excited for the opportunity and i'm i'm here to make the most of it and thank you for being mindful it's me that keeps talking <laughs> i'm going to jujitsu again here in just a, an hour or so so i i should probably stop rambling myself but <laughs> thank you for the opportunity <laughs> oh, i never think it's rambling always fun getting to have you on i'm very excited to you know hear any insights about you know this fight just because it's such an intriguing one to me like the first fight I was intrigued by but I feel like you both have built such great momentum since then to even compound that 
intrigue further. So thanks so much for making a bit of time, Deanna, and looking forward to checking that out on April 21st. But until then, you have a good rest of your day. Oh, thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of your day too.